but I wonder if you would reflect, please, on how an innovation toolkit and the attempts to build a culture look differently in a product, a largely product-oriented firm versus a service-oriented firm. And I was struck by something, Teresa, you said in terms of the real-time cycle of consumer feedback that translates into data that helps your decision-making. And Karen, you mentioned a consultative problem-solving process with your clients. If you could just expand on that and talk about the, the toolkit, please, as a difference between product and services firms. Thank you. Know, you know, I'll start maybe, and then yeah. I know Teresa and I have talked a lot about this. If you think about innovation as a service, right, you're sort of highlighting this issue as, of innovation as a service and how do companies, small or large, really create a culture to innovate. There is very little distinction today between a services company and a product company. They are, they are blending and merging into one. If you think about a continuum, you have a services company that provides talent and insight and intellect, all the way to a product company that develops something that really provides a service. Those two things, when merged together, create what I'll call solutions. And I think while all of us are different, whether it's a product-focused or services-focused company, it is the blending of products and services that make what we do extraordinary. And so I'll give you the example with, uh, we, we partner with Amazon. And they are a great technology firm that is providing scalable and sustainable solutions to clients. They need a services company like ours, a strategy and consulting firm like us, to bring those two things together, the product and the service, in order to be able to transform a business for a client. Today, it's very hard to differentiate between a product mm -hmm. company and a services company. They are very much blended. And in fact, that's a great question. We, we, in fact, we've had this conversation a lot. We, even call, we call our tools cloud services. And in fact, my entire sales force, I don't call them sales, I call them customer facing service reps. But we do, you know, groups, Booz Allen Hamilton is a great example. They've been doing this for 100 years. We provide innovative tools, but still at the end of the day, there is really got to be a group that understands how to go in with these large enterprises especially and help them make that cultural shift. And uh, when I go around the world and talk to governments around the world, I talk about a six step process that even large governments are going through to make this disruptive uh, shift to cloud computing, which it, it again, it is, it, it's just that, it's so disruptive. But you still need a Booz Allen Hamilton to come in and say, Let's talk about organizationally, organizationally how you make that shift because you have uh, different job classifications. You have big data scientists now. You have sysadmins. You're going to from a, um, a dev ops model. I mean, you're completely transforming how you're doing things. So it really is a blend uh, of, I think, sort of the technologies with a group that can allow you to, to get there from a process perspective. Yeah, and I think I'd also add to, uh, to Karen's point about everything is connected now. So whether it's now your watch or your, your vehicle or your refrigerator, they're all connected to the internet. And so now what was once a product and a one-time transaction, it's now an ongoing service and relationship. Because you have the data flowing, you have to deal, That's with, right. you have to deal with it. But, but I do think your point is right. There, there's a level of investment that has to come with, with every type yeah. of innovation. And actually, interestingly enough, we've sort of patterned ourselves here in terms of lowest up to the highest yeah. in terms of the investment. To me, the, the trick on all of that is how do you do some prototyping? How do you do some things quickly before you have to make the big investment? Because the more you have to make ultimately, the more you want to be sure before you make that big investment. My, my friend Gordon Bell, who uh, was the engineer of the VAX, has a saying, a demo is worth a thousand pages of a business plan. Yeah. 